name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God. Amen. Welcome to our new episode on Pentecost. Today we will reflect on 1 Corinthians 15, a resurrection religion. Let me tell you a story of a missionary in Brazil who discovered the tribe of Indians in a remote part of the jungle. They lived near a large river. The tribe was in need of a medical attention. A contagious disease was ravaging the population. People were dying daily. A hospital was not too ter terribly far away, across the river, but the Indians would not cross it because they believed it was inhabited by evil spirits. To enter the water would mean certain death. The missionary explained how he had crossed the river and was unharmed. They were not impressed. He then took them to the bank and placed his hand in the water. They still wouldn't go in. He walked into the water, up to his waist, and splashed water on his face. It didn't matter. They were still afraid to enter the river. Finally, he dove into the river, swam beneath the surface until he emerged on the other side. He punched a triumphant fist into the air. He had entered the water and escaped. It was then that the Indians broke out into a chi and followed him across the river. That's exactly what Jesus did. He told the people of his day that they need not fear the river of death, but they wouldn't believe. He touched a dead boy and called him back to life. They still didn't believe. He whispered life into the body of a dead girl and got the same result. He left the dead man, spent four days in a tomb and then called him out and the people still didn't believe him. Finally, he entered the river of death and came out on the other side. No wonder we celebrate the resurrection. Christianity is a resurrection religion. The New Testament speaks of at least four separate resurrections. Let's take a look together. One, the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. About 36 hours after his death, Jesus saw, which had been in Hades, the abbot of the dead, and his body, which had lain on a stone in the tomb, were reunited. At one and the same time, his body and soul were raised. That is to say, it was transformed into what St. Paul calls the body of his glory. In his resurrection, body Christ's burst forth from the tomb, passed through the closed doors, appeared to his disciples and disappeared. Then, finally, in defiance of the law of gravity, he ascended out of sight into the cloud. Where was the key? Let's look at the following illustration. A father and his little girl were staying in a hotel. During the night, the girl became very ill. Without warning, she died. The father was heartbroken. He had already lost his wife. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. But what is that about the keys? Christianity is a resurrection religion. The resurrection of the believers bodies. The scriptures tells us that the resurrection of Jesus from the dead supplies both the proof and the pattern of the resurrection of our body at the second coming of Christ. As he arose, so we shall rise in fact and in manner. And St. Paul says to the Corinthians, just as we have borne image of the man of dust, Adam, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven, Christ. He also said, We will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body. In one of his lighter moments, Benjamin Franklin penned his own epitaph, the body of B. Franklin, printer 
like the cover of an old book, its contents torn out and stripped of its lettering and golding, lies here food for worms, but the work shall not be wholly lost, for it will, as he believed, appear once more in a new and more perfect edition, corrected and amended by the author. Christianity is a resurrection religion. The resurrection of sinners. Between the past resurrection of Christ and the future resurrection of the body, another resurrection is taking place. It is spiritual in nature, but also supernatural and also no less real. Jesus spoke of it often, as in the Gospel of St. John. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. The spiritual resurrection is as great a miracle as the raising of a body, perhaps even greater in a way due to the power of the human will. Paul spoke of it when he wrote to the Ephesians, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. But because of his great for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Christianity is a resurrection religion. Dead people do not see, hear or feel. That's true of people who are dead spiritually. They are dead to the things of God. They don't see or hear Him or feel Him. They are dead. They can't resurrect themselves. Only God can do it. And then, only if they want, they can have the new life. If you are a Christian, you have been raised from the dead. You have been made alive in Christ. Mrs. Cordray, a widow from Canton, Ohio, had been under the care of a physician for Parkinson's disease. She was declared dead and her body was sent to a funeral home. A mortician began making preparations for embalming when he thought he saw her tongue move. A moment later, she took a breath. She recovered from that ordeal and lived several more years. Do you suppose she knew that she was still alive all those years? I imagine so. So it is with the Christian who has received new life in Christ. The believer takes his pulse from time to time, forgiven, possesses peace and joy, a life filled with new goals, new desires, and a new destination. Let's take a look at the following illustration. Drink his water and live. A preacher was speaking on the subject, Jesus, the water of life. A non-Christian interrupted him and said, your religion is like this little stream of water, but my religion is like a great ocean. Yes, said the preacher, but there is a difference. When men drink ocean water, they die. But when they drink the water of life, which Christ gives, they live forever. Christianity is a resurrection religion. What about the resurrection of the saints? This is the work of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who breathes new life into the one who has grown cold toward God. He is the one who can take dry bones and make them live again. God wants us to give him our best. It will take all the energy and vitality that we possess. We must come alive to him. 
Many Christians today are dead or maybe dormant to opportunities, power that's available to them, responsibilities and holy living. St. Paul says to the Romans, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, let's look at the following illustration. John Sung's dream. John Sung came to America in 1920 to work on his doctorate in chemistry. He excelled in his studies. Attractive offers of jobs came to him. At the same time, he felt the call of Christ to serve him. He faced a dilemma. After a period of great spiritual struggle, he dedicated himself utterly to God. Soon afterward, he had a most unusual dream in which he saw himself in a casket. God seemed to say to him, John Sung is dead, dead to self but alive in Christ. Then it seemed that the corpse began to stir. Angels began to weep. John said, don't weep, angels. I will remain dead to the world and live only for Christ. He became a mighty preacher of the gospel. For 15 years, he was a burning and shining light in China and Southwest Asia. In fact, he was acclaimed China's greatest evangelist. Christianity is a religion of resurrection. Well, that's all we have for you today. God bless you and see you tomorrow a new episode on Pentecost.